Hi, we're back. Sorry it took so long to get on to part two. We had a very busy Friday and a weekend. It's not a bad problem to have, but it certainly put this project behind. I want to keep delving into this kit collection we got. I got very positive feedback from people who viewed part one. I hope I can show you some more neat stuff in the part two and part three. So moving right ahead, in the collection we received a Tamiya German 88. And then when it was released, they also put out that eight ton half track. Whoever uh, had this at one time conveniently taped the boxes together. Thank you very much. And these both have the MM number, so you know these are probably originals or very close to it. We have the Daimler staff car, also from the MM series. Way back in the day, it was $2.98 at Hobby House. <laughs> Special Air Service Jeep. These to me a kit, you know, they disappear for a while, they come back. Always nice to see. Stuff you don't see as much of. The Heller. It's a Heller. Uh, French motorcycle and sidecar in 35th scale. Very neat. Uh, this one has personal appeal to me. The Screamin' Mimi from Monogram. 132nd scale. You could build this as a standard Sherman or you could put the rocket launcher on. I built this kit when I was a teenager. And it was a fun kit. You know, it wasn't spectacularly detailed. It's got, you know, one piece tracks and, and rubber and that. But the thing that blew my mind was the how to build diorama books that came in these kits. This one here showed you how to make a diorama, how to put extra detail on your on your vehicles and tanks. There's even a little how-to to paint flesh and figures. These things, I think, really expanded the minds of a lot of people who looked at models as toys. And these things just, you know, they told you this was more like an art. And Shep Payne always was the best, the master at making the best out of what you got in the kit and little things you could find around to augment it. Long range desert group truck, sealed. MM kit, so that's a very older version. German Hanamag, another venerable 35th scale kit from Tamiya. As is the six pounder gun. <laughs> another cool wagon. These are kind of interesting. Airfix historic car kits. You know, they're 32nd scale, so these would go in certain periods. 1905 might have been around in World War I. That's the 1905 rolls. A 1904 Dirac. I'm not that familiar with that one. And a 1911 Rolls Royce. Again, it scales out with the, you know, 32nd scale figures for diorama purposes. This was uh, Airfix's entry into the half track. You know, Rommel's half track. Picture of the guy right on it. And that's in 132 scale as opposed to 135th scale, which to me it did. There's an old looking, this is MT-107. So I think that's motorized tank, if I remember correctly. Walk a bulldog. And yes, if I open it up, oh yeah, there we are. There's your gear transmission. There's your battery powered motor. If you've been following us on Facebook at all, I kind of wrote a tongue-in-cheek article on April 1st a number of years ago, and I described how that the, the uh, Japanese model tank industry was fostered by Godzilla movies. Watch your old original Godzilla movies. Watch them stomping on those little toy tanks that are tunneling along. So I came up with this theory that, well, maybe they had them from the movie. Kids really liked them and went from there. All nonsense. I made it all up, but hey, it sounded plausible, right? There's a sealed Hetzer from Italeri. There's an open Hetzer from Italy. Because he liked Hetzers. Ah, the venerable Tiger one. Kit number 3556. See, that's a four digit. They use five digit numbers. So I guess after the MMMTs, they went to this numbering. And then they went to the five uh, number system that we're more familiar with now. Another kit near and dear to my heart. Built that many, many years ago. Did the white washing thing on and that. A lot of fun. I mean, it wouldn't hold up to today's detailed kits, but, you know, I really liked it. M4A3 Sherman. There, we talked about Peerless Max, a one and a half ton personnel carrier. Again, Peerless was doing some really neat things back in the 70s and 80s. You sometimes find them under Italeri, but not always. Ah, a Panzer. 
Panther. This is MT123. So, if I'm right, yep, yeah, there's all your motorizing stuff, your batteries and your... Now back then, even when you didn't get the motorized version, say you got the static version of this, of course you'd have all the holes where the motorization stuff was left out. So, same tank, different dig. They're early Stug. MM114, so that's that's pretty out there. Now oh, we're getting into some Italeri kits. You know, Italeri was a really superior kit back in the day. They had breeches on their guns, they had opening hatches. You know, they had that little nth degree of detail that to me was lacking in their kits. Oh, there's a good one. You don't see these around as much anymore. That's the Peerless Max, the original version of the Dodge Ambulance. It has come out under Italeri, and I think they're pretty scarce from anybody right now. Oh, another Peerless Canadian field gun tractor truck. Nice. Hey, sorry about that. I think I had a little technical glitch with my camera, but we're back. There is a Chevrolet gun tractor from Italeri. I don't know. You decide. Looks the same to me. So I'm assuming this is a repop by Ada Larry of this. There's the Sherman M4A1 in an older, more original box. You can tell the old ones by the way they spell Italeri or Italeri as some people pronounce it. The uh, motorcycles from Tamiya, they've been around a while. There's an Italeri German anti tank gun. That was a quite a nice piece back in the 70s. Lots of diorama possibilities. You had nice figures and uh, extras to go with it ammo, crates, guns, things like that. Another cribble wagon. Oh, and there's some more of these little cars. There's your 1904 Durax again. Oh, a pyro vintage brass car, 1951 pie wagon. Not terribly familiar with that one. I love it when I get stuff like this, and I'm, I, you know, I've been doing this 35 years, and I see stuff that I'm not familiar with. Vintage brass car. What makes it brass? There's a little bit of brass trim as opposed to chrome trim. There you go. Hence the brass. Dragon VC Firefly. Panzerkampfwagen 1 from Tommy. Now there's another kit. Oh, see, it's got the Italeri banner too. I was going to say, back in the 70s and 80s when I was doing this stuff, Italeri was the only one that had a Panzer 1 and it remained that way for a lot of years. There's an old RPM, Char Cannon FT-17. Old and crude by today's standards, but you know, like everything, you put a little work into it. Sturm Panzer A7 from Toro Models. That was the only kit of that for years, I think, until Meng came up with it. Tough to build, but when they got built, they looked pretty good. And there's another Midori half track in 140th scale. Hmm, be hard to find stuff to go with that. The GMC. Transport truck from Heller Models. Heller was a bit of a player back in the day, too. And another half track in 140th scale. There's a 132nd scale Bentley Roadster. Another 1905 Rolls Royce. And Lifelike 1934. This gentleman had some neat plans, I think, to do some dioramas with civilian cars and military stuff. And there's that GMC truck in a, in a different boxing, a more modern boxing from Heller Sealed. Okay, give me a second to set up and we'll look at a bag. Hi, okay, well next we're going to go to a bag. So if you keep it scored, this is bag number three of six. So we had six bags, two boxes, we've done one box and we've done two bags. Now we're into bag number three. This guy liked his Tamiya. There's a sealed 
M10 tank destroyer, the original issue. MT-142, that means, you know it, there's a motor in there. There's uh, something interesting, a company called Almark, Japanese infantry and 132nd scale. Not terribly familiar with those. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. They look a little crude, but they're not horrible. Kind of remind you of Airfix stuff, but it's in uh, a hard plastic rather than that soft plastic. Some more 30 second multi pose guys. See, it also, uh, it's worth noting that, you know, the way the hobby developed, historical people worked in 32 scale, 132 scale, which is 54 millimeters. That's a very popular historical miniature scale. That may be another reason a lot of companies offered you options in plastic as opposed to white metal and or actually lead back in the day. So a little cheaper maybe, a little easier to work with, less uh, harmful, shall we say. That's a multi-pose. That's the box that replaced the thin, more colorful boxing. This is the more recent uh, issue. And the venerable universal carrier, Bren carrier from Tamiya. Only game in town until the Reach models came out. Ah, a Heller Woolies Jeep. I understand that was a pretty good kit in its day. That's a 70s vintage box, of course. Another 30 second scale Ford. A Talari, as opposed to Italeri. Schwimmwagen. There's an M5A1 light tank. That's MM197, so it's a static kit, but from an early series. Seventy-five millimeter generic kind of World War One howitzer tannin. I think this thing scales in at one sixteenth or something like that. I don't think it's even stated on the box. They actually build up pretty neat. If you want a, just a display piece, SAS Jeep. Another Italeri Kobo wagon. And our aforementioned, after we've talked about Eshi earlier, there's their 7.5 light infantry gun. Eshi flat gun. Those, might, those molds might continue to exist today. They might be the things on the back of Italeri half tracks and trucks. Commando car. I think that's, uh, even the box art uh, reminds me of uh, Peerless kits. But to me, original Matilda. And then 124. Remember, I'm seeing this stuff for the first time. This is the first time I've seen it as a pulling out of the bag. Cargo and tank trailer from Italy. Multi-pose Japanese figures. Those were kind of rare at one time. I don't know what the current status is. And a dragon set of figures. Dragon, as you know, dominated the armor model market in the 90s and the 2000s. Multi-pose German. More barbed wire accessories. German tank crew from Tamiya. There you go. A CMP from Peerless Max. One of their older boxings. There's a lot more uh, Japanese writing on these particular kits. The German command car. Back in the 80s, uh, Ravel teamed up with Italeri. I guess they became like the North American distributor for Italeri. So the box art and whatnot combined the two brand names. Our MP models Sherman accessories to convert to a Israeli M50. You can buy the kit now, so I don't know if anybody would really want the conversion to do the work, but hey. There's a set of second division, I guess, French troops. And another to me a half truck. There you go, Bedford, QL Gun Porty, Peerless Max. 
I'm going to set the bottom of this box. An airplane. Hey, finally something aircraft oriented. Aviatic Berg from Flashback Models. And last but not least, another aircraft. Aero Club Models, Southwick Paul 148. So I'll end uh, part two of the videos right here. Uh, please come back to see part three where I get into some more bags. Thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying this little nostalgic trip with me. Thank you.